Hi, this is Renisha, and welcome to my podcast, In the Mind of Free. Today, we're going to be talking about something everyone knows about, some people don't, and some people know more about in this world. Okay, I haven't been in the been around in the world for very long, so I don't know most about love. My concept of love is based off what I've seen, people around me, tea, all that, like most people. TV, your family, your friends. That's what I get my concept of love. That's what I learn from my experiences, stuff like that. So this is my concept of love. What does love mean? I mean, love is a sacrifice. It's a give and take. Love is communication, trust, honesty. Love is a caringness. Love is a union. You know, love not supposed to be one-sided. You're not supposed to love more than everyone else. You're supposed to love almost equally. I mean, you may, you may be someone who loves just a little more, but if you love too much more, if I'm not right, you, the person who loves the most, is the one who's in the most pain at the end. The person who loves the most is the one who suffers the most. The person who loves the most is the one who gets the most backlash. Person who doesn't love enough, what happens to them? I've seen what happens around me when someone loves more than the other person. The other person tends to get away with more stuff, whereas the other person is the one suffering. Yet the other person who loves the least is the one people pay attention to the most. The person who loves the most gets the least amount of attention. That's what I've seen. When it comes to love, I've seen. The person who most, most sacrifices usually benefits the least. And the person who has the least amount of sacrifice benefits the most. I've seen love where there's honesty and trust and communication and sync. Everything's in sync. Everyone gets each other. It's a mutual understanding. There's some things that don't have to be said. I've seen all kinds of love around me. I've seen more bad than good, honestly. And the bad is taught me, you know, it didn't strain me away from love, but it did teach me what I want. It did show me, you know, think, made me think. Made me think quite a bit about what I want for love. It did teach me the do's and don'ts of love, all the wrong types of love. So, don't take the wrong type of love for granted, because the wrong type of love teaches you a lesson. It teaches you what not to do in love. I would say wrong love, I would say. So then, like I said, I kind of say it's wrong love more or less because it's a lesson. It teaches you what you deserve when you meet someone who's not right for you. It teaches you what you do deserve. It teaches you what you don't deserve. It teaches you what you need, what you want. It teaches you a lot. For me, when it comes to love, Feel like there should be a mutual understanding. There should be some type of trust. And when it's not trust, everything breaks down. When it's not communication, everything breaks down. I've seen what that's like. I've seen it. I've witnessed what it's like when trust and communication breaks down. Nothing ever works out right. Everything's always wrong. There's always chaos. There's always drama. Love's not supposed to be like that. Yes, you may fight from time to time. When those fights drag on, it affects the whole relationship. When those fights never get resolved, that's how distrust forms. Things don't get resolved, things don't get fixed. Distrust. That's what happens, mistrust happens. You stop trusting one another, you stop trusting one another, you stop communicating the way you're supposed to, you stop communicating with each other. There's always going to be an excuse to fight. Because you're looking for an answer that hasn't been solved yet. You're looking for something. And you need something that you're not getting. So because of that, you act out in anger a lot. Because you're looking for something. That's what love shouldn't be. You shouldn't have to beg for love. You shouldn't have to beg for the person you love to do for you what they're supposed to be doing. You shouldn't have to continuously act. For the person you love. 
do things for you they're supposed to do. There are certain things that should be just understood. I've seen what that's like. People begging for love. I've seen what it's like when someone's in a lot of pain because of the person they love, they, they deny it. Instead of taking responsibility and rebuilding the trust they lost, to take responsibility, taking some accountability and admitting I messed up. They play the blame game. They blame the other person. I've seen that. I've seen the good kind of love where when you make a mistake, you own up to it and you fix it like an adult. I've seen that. But the thing about love, especially on TV, that's the one thing that drives me, one thing that drives me crazy is people tend to combine love with obsession. <laughs> they are not the same thing. <laughs> I wish people would get that love and obsession are not the same thing. Think about it. You see that so much in telenovelas, melodramas, soap operas. You see that a lot. I mean, you even see that on real life documentary. You know, people just say, oh, we just loved her so much. Or she loved him so much. She just made her crazy. Made them crazy. Like, no. <laughs> like, uh. No. <laughs> love don't make you want to hurt the person. I mean, love don't make you want to protect the person. Make you want to never see them upset. Make you feel upset to see them upset or cry. Make you want to, you know, like I said, protect. But you don't hurt people when you love them. That's not love when you're hurting them. You don't set your person you want but for failure to make yourself feel better about yourself. You know? You don't push the person you love to the ground and make yourself feel superior, make yourself feel strong. That's a thing. And I've seen that a lot, especially like, you know, older generation. You know, that's the thing with them too. I mean, not just older, but you know, younger generation, not be able to distinguish love from the section and obsession. They distinguish that. There's a big difference. You stalking somebody, you don't stalk somebody out of love. Okay, you don't constantly call their house, call their house, and not answer repeatedly. I love. You don't send weird messages to a person that disturbing images to them. I don't love. You don't try to strike fear into a person. I love. <laughs> you don't try to physically injure someone. I don't love. <laughs> You don't do that. That's not love. If you're causing the person you love pain, any kind of pain or suffering, that's not love. I just wish people would get that. You know, I may be young, yeah, but even I know you don't hurt the person you love when you truly love them because you don't want to hurt them. You don't want to see them sad. You don't want to see them upset. You definitely don't want them scared of you. In the world is striking fear to somebody. Love. <laughs> Trying to make them feel beneath you. Love. <laughs> I understand that people love that. Like I said, you see that a lot in shows. You know, and I just wish they would stop using that. They would show what real love is, you know? Because people see that, especially young people, they see that and think that's okay for somebody to act like that in the name of love. You know, like stalk somebody, stalk them, especially, you know, nowadays we have social media. Social media can make a slippery slope, especially when it comes to relationships. And definitely make or break your relationship with social media. That's why you gotta make sure you set boundaries with social media in your relationship and you bring shit to social media. It's one thing my celebrities, they make that mistake, making your relationship way too popular on social media. Get way too many people involved. This thing about celebrities, they don't know that. A lot of them do not get that. Keep your relationship to yourself. Don't bring it to the public because you making it work. Come make escalate the problem instead of help your problem. Don't escalate it. Way too many people who don't know what's going on. No. I'm saying set boundaries on social media. Because, like I said, social media can very easily in the world we live in make or break your relationship if you're not smart or careful or set boundaries.
saying love versus obsession. I just wish one day we really would. Like I said, you know, people see that. People being obsessed with people in the name of love, saying they love their person. Like, no. Uh-uh. And I'm seeing all these shows, like, telenovelas and melodrama. They big on stuff like that. Like, melodramas and soap opera. They're big on folks like that. In the name of love. Doing all this. Talking about they love person. How are you doing all deceiving and deception and the lies? How are you doing all that in the name of love? You don't do that. Like I said, trust and honesty is a big part of any relationship. You start off with a lie, it's not going to go well. <laughs> Off for a lie, marriage, whatever, with a lie, you can't expect it to end well when you start off with a lie. <laughs> Lies and deception and scheming, it ain't going well. You know what I'm saying? I just wish, you know, they would stop making that very, I get it, very popular. I mean, it's very popular, but I just wish, you know, they would, I don't know, switch it up from time to time. And like show them, you know, show what real love is and uh, not condone obsession and greed. Love in the name of love. I just wish you know, yeah, they would show a little more or at least call it out for what it is. <laughs> you know, do more of a calling it out because a lot of shows they don't call that out as affection, call it out as being greedy. You know, they don't call it out. Not, not enough shows call it out for what that is. They call it out as love. And I just wish they would call it out more. Like I said, if there are young people watching it. You know, even though, yeah, it's fishing, but the concept of love is real, you know? The concept of our relationships and all that, that's part is real. You know, you don't want to teach young people that it's okay to stalk somebody. You don't want to teach them, oh, in the name of love, I, I claim that I love this person. It's okay for me to stalk them. Because I'm loving I just want to get to know them back. You know, I'm stalking them. I know everything about them. You know, it's okay for me to, you know, trash pads, walk up to the house whenever I feel like it, you know, walk up to the house, find out where you live there and go over and visit and then look. It's okay for me, you know. Try to hit them with a car or something like that. You know, to make them, you know, hurt so they can pit on me. I look like no. Well, no. I'm about to rant at this point, but still <laughs> I know I have a lot to learn about love, but Things I have learned. Boy. Boy, 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 boy. Oh, what I said, I learned more bad than good. Like, what not to do more than I learned what to do. <laughs> I still have a lot to learn. But, you know, there's one thing I would, like I said, I would wish we would fix that, that need to call obsession love. Because, um, I'm pretty sure it's proven. If you ever watch the ID channel, this ID Discovery, I'm pretty sure um, there should be a difference. That is, is criminally known as a difference. <laughs> because obsession tends to lead to people doing crazy stuff like murdering people. And um, you don't murder someone you love just because they try to leave you. Or they, they cheated on you or something. You know, most people don't go the whole, I'm going to murder them around, so you know what I'm saying? We need to stop combining those two words, because they're not the same thing. They're literally two different words for a reason. So we need to stop combining them. Anyway, thanks for listening.